Greetings everyone and welcome to Tierno, the New Order, the Last Days of Europe, in which we are playing as a Divine Mandate of Siberia. So now normally, uh, I would show you like me clicking on the flag at the beginning of the very game, but unfortunately we can't do that because to get the Divine Mandate of Siberia and get this event Gods of the North, you have to play the game until basically Om Omolan, Omolan here in the Far East, basically annexes her allies and becomes a divine mandate of Siberia. So, gods of the north. Reports have slowly begun filtering down from the movement in the distant communes of Siberia. What it is really we cannot say, but the fact that any form of news is leaving that region alone has set many to wondering what exactly could be happening. Surely, if the communes are making any kind of stir for the first time in 20 years, it must be in some form or some sort of important form. Reports speak of stirrings from the religious. Those few traders who make their way that far north over the East Siberian trade routes have spoken of entire communes chanting in prayer, of churches being filled to the brim, and some of the figure pushing them onward. Nobody knows exactly what has been spurred this action, but the people of Siberia keep praying for one man. They call him the Father. Nothing but nonsense. Of course, if I haven't said it so yet, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and I like playing TNO a lot. So, it's 1964, October 18th, which is literally the very first day. Oh, this is kind of red. Oh, I didn't realize that this was kind of red if you look at the game board. But, uh, very first day that the Divine Mandate of Siberia actually has a focus tree. So the Sermon of the Father. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Ever since the Father began his sacred calling, guiding the lost souls of Siberia to the true way and showing them the path to salvation. He has attracted many followers. His own path has taken him many miles, but today, Alexander Men has given one last teaching to his faithful on the banks of the Alaman Amalan River, calling them to action against the forces of darkness that dominate the Far East and Russia as a whole. Already, we have begun to organize our faithful into bands and armies, preparing once and for all to establish a divine mandate, in which we get 2,500 manpower. As you can see, Cheetah's looking pretty darn thick, Kemerovo looking pretty good, as well as the West Russian Revolutionary Front, and we start off with a total of Ooh, five divisions, which look not great. Uh, let's see, I have not even tried this off screen at all, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I hope we do well. We shall be led by ooh, Timofey Yelkov, Gleb Yakunin, Mikhail Yukov, Vukovol. He's got an awesome hat, I like that. Pavel looking kind of fierce. And then Gle Vladimir looks like he should be driving a taxi. I'm going to go with Pav. No, I'm going to go with Mikhail just because he's got that awesome hat. And we have 100 command power, so uh, inflexible strategist might be really good. G general max army size. Reconnaissance could be pretty darn good as well. I'm going to go with Timofey. Timofey. Yelkov, just because he's level 3, or level th skill 3 attack, skill 3 defense, th skill 2, and skill level 4 for that stuff. So that, I think, will work out pretty nicely for us. In which, even though he is an inflexible strategist, we could grab that. He has two trade slots. Expert Delegator actually might not be too bad to get, but we're going to go with offensive because I like being offensive. And an Unyielding Defender. Ooh, and what do we have here? We have no divisions training, which is not a good thing. Let's train maybe at least one more thing here. And we're out of manpower immediately. Oh boy. Let's see. I believe I might have set this up though so that we're making some guns. No, this is already set up for us. We got some guns and then I threw in more stuff here too. We're going to need some support equipment as well, especially artillery. Yeah, that's going to be very key to help blow up enemies. Good, good, yes, please. And we can do some more planning. Uh, I tabbed over, actually. Uh, to get to this point, I was using the Observer Console Command just to watch what was happening. I was playing as Irkutsk, technically, but I'm just, mostly just observing them. And apparently, uh, I guess we're scavenging for loot already. Cool. We're doing industrial investments and political campaign, which I don't really like. Oh, we get more daily political power, but... Uh, uh, Okay, we got seven guys now. Look, November 1st. Happy November 1st, everyone. So because we are playing actually quite a bit ahead of time, usually we start in like January of 62 or whenever it is, March or something. Oh, can we do a raid? Ooh, can I raid? Oh, please let me raid. Ooh, maybe we can raid. The Pacific Fleet, they need money. Sermon of the Father would be very good. Uh, this campaign will probably be maybe slightly shorter than normal. We get some equipment, it looks like. 
the light shines in darkness. Let's get some more stability, too. The disappointing truth is that we are currently witnessing the darkest of times in the history of our people, as dark as those before the light of the message began to spread among the Rus. But we are the light that shines in the darkness. As such, we must stand above all the disgusting and sinful statesmen and soldiers, rapists and pillagers, communists and fascists to show the people our virtue. For the Father has taught us that to live a life in reflection of Christ is the best way to inspire those under the influence of darkness to find salvation. And if there are those who will not accept their image and example, casting it down and threatening our message, the might of God will be cast upon them and they will be smolt down. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. We get command power of all things. Political power and stability, which is what I'm really rooting and shooting for. Uh, let's see. Irkutsk. Oh, 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 you're by Mr. Yagoda. The Westerman's Journey. Five to seven divisions. Chita has six to eight. We have five. Ooh. I want to beat someone up. I really do. Alden. Alden's got to have not many soldiers, right? They've only... Oh, you know what? We might be able to beat this guy up. Hold on. Please quickly make your booties available so we can get over here. Thank you. Woe with be to the servant to the faithless, for they shall know the sorrow of the void, rightfully filled by the kingdom of God for man. Where the devout, the just, the mighty reach towards the gates of heaven for eternal paradise, the false-hearted and his companion will find themselves cast to the soil of the earth. Stone in hand is a cries for the bleak nightly skies. This was the existence tied to the soul of the western man. A murder serving murders, the mark of Cain by any other name, just as rotten, prepared, and ready to defy the Lord in favor of the mortal machinations of sin. Thus did he march to the east, adorned no longer in the rich metals of the militant earth, but rather of the torn rags of the meek, trudging through the endless wastes until he reached that sacred land of the holy, the land of our father, Amalon. The, it was there that this murder turned wanderer faced the truth his, of his damnation, dropping to his knees before the Father. There were his reckons, which relayed across the heavenly spheres as our mighty Lord listened on, pleased to hear the fire of redemption laden or laden with the sinner. There the Almighty's vessel, our Father, took him from his solely death of manhood and transformed him towards a light of holiness. Blood doth froze upon the wicked western man's, western man's hands on that cold winter evening. However, the light of our Lord cleansed and made him new. The word of Amalon. Ooh, we get a pseudo plot ball. Becomes a field marshal. Oh, we already made a guy who's a. Oh, hello. I like a little truck. Please, quickly get over there. Vukvol. Oh, uh, he's a winter expert. You know what? I normally don't grab this. Let's go grab him. Caught acclimatization factor plus 40%. We have minus 50% winter attrition, which is pretty good. But let's grab that one. Why not? I almost never choose stuff like that. So, what can we do here? Anything? Planning invest in infrastructure. <clears throat> Hey, look, we got a little bit of that manpower. Nice. And we're mobilizing. Ooh. Mm, trainer troops. I kind of like that. We're going to need more manpower. Let's go. Oh, we can do infrastructure, I suppose. Because right now, can we... We're building roads. And this was set... This Amalon... This factory construction thing was here before I even used it. So, can I, we can't invest anywhere. Because we already pretty much filled it up. So, that's not good. <clears throat> That is quite not... Boy, I know the sh light shines in darkness, my friends. Burn the idols. Not bad. Denounce the oath. More political power? We could use that. Army professional begins to improve. Oh, we gotta go with that one. On the believers. If we are realistic, living by example and preaching in the frozen wastes of northern Siberia will only get our movement so far indeed. It seems like it has already begun to paint a target on our backs by some of the more paranoid despots and their lackeys thus. We need to begin to prepare for a great confrontation with the armies of darkness. It has become obvious that we will approach this twofold. The first is by preparing Sudoplatov and his troops, and the second is beginning to mobilize our Christian militias and arming them in any way possible. Sudoplatov, while somewhat of a wild card, has been useful to, to us so far. It is time that we put our faith in him and his soldiers. They will be an integral part of our upcoming struggles, and our militias, filled with the most vehement of our followers, will flow over the forces of darkness, like a second flood, but this time, instead of water punishing the wicked, it will be our brave soldiers fighting for the sake of the light. <clears throat> I'm glad we get equipment. Please tell me they still have equipment there. No, they don't have money! No! Oh, come on. They have no money, or treasure, I should really say. Uh, oh, can we can we fight Irkutsk? I kind of want to say no. We got five army XP, which is nice. Harold Wilson elected English Prime Minister. Uh, okay, well, okay, whatever. They have nine factories. They have five to seven. Yeah, I just don't think it'd be worth it for us to try to fight these guys. We have one loot. Now, hopefully someone will try to attack us. And we can beat them up. Ooh, try and spy call. Ooh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, man. I don't want to fight either one. I really don't. You guys are six to eight, and no, you have some light. Actually, we can see what how many divisions they might have. Ah, oh, that is not bueno. 
Let's do motorized divisions. How much infantry equipment do we have? Minus 400. Eh. Uh, actually, you know what? We actually lose HP if we go with elite infantry. What if we do this? We will need just a little bit more infantry equipment, but we need anti-tank, which we don't have either. Oh, crap. Why do you pain me like this, Divine Mandate of Siberia? Actually, we should have that actually pretty soon, right? A little bit of lag. Happy December 1st. Do we get... Ooh. All we get is infantry equipment. Fraternal militias would be cool, but that's only for two years for more army XP gain. Let's grab some Pseudo Platov's Brigade. It's no secret that Pavel Pseudo Platov is an odd and eccentric character. His career has previously been defined by everything that we preach against. And people are killing each other like crazy. Defined by everything that we preach against, including his own cooperation with and employment by the terror of Irkutsk, Genrik Yagoda. That being said, it's also clear that the benefit of that Sudoplatov has brought with him not only his military know-how and experience in the South, but a whole brigade of soldiers loyal to his back and call. Or his beck and call, really. On top of this, he has also achieved the famous status of a folk hero who has been continuously fighting against injustice after his defection, a man seeking redemption for his past acts. For now, Pseudo... Oh, Sudoplatov seems to be a willing ally of ours and his brigade, a group of professional NKVD trained troops, are ultimately an invaluable asset for us going forwards. And we get even more manpower with this one. Nice. So we have a, a few more guns. I like that. I like that we have a few more guns. Uh, sport equipment. God dang it. We need a lot of things. I, oh, I just don't think fighting these guys would be worth it. I don't know if we could actually do it because these guys, they're probably n really just not that weak. We could spend 75 for more army XP, but, hmm. Hmm. Gonna get points. Well, points over three, that's not really great. Wait, now you have money? Oh, crap. Now, okay, guys, let's move back over here. At least get one division in here first. We're gonna prepare a rate. Just go ahead and do it. Yes. No, not, not, not that one. No, not that one. Oh. I hope the motorized can get over here quickly, because I want, the, I want their, their stuff. We're gonna be the ones to take out Kamchatka. Which is the Pacific Fleet, so. Please. Go fast. Where are you? Oh, you're still. Oh, my goodness. You have 14 kilometers per hour. While well, these guys have 14 kilometers per hour, too. Wow, that's actually really fast. Okay. Go, 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 go. I should have just kept guys over there. My bad. After this, we shall denounce the oath. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. No man should be bound by an earthly oath. These oaths are rooted in the evil one and are inherently sinful. Thus, we should denounce our oaths to the mortal men, and his institutions, and encourage all others to do so. These oaths and those who force them upon the people help despots and sinful warlords to masquerade as mediators between God and man. Actually, since we're here, oh, we have uh, better research. That's not bad. Better agricultural production stuff. We have some better industrial equipment, as well as a little bit better industrial expertise. That's cool. Literacy is barely improving. Poverty is not going up or down. And professionalism for army professionalism is slightly going up from having... Well, for basically being in a ditch currently, so... Divine minded of Siberia, huh? That's gonna take some time. But it's almost 1965. It feels weird in our first episode to almost be in 1965. But you know what? We'll accept that for now, if we must. If we must. We have plenty of fuel for now. I hope that these guys would come raid us. Someone please try to raid me as after I try to raid these guys. That'd be kind of nice. Internal investments, research, manpower. I'm, I'm really tempted to get a little bit more manpower. There we go, prepare the raid. You know what? We're gonna do it anyways, because we do get, what, 0.73 every day? Just gonna train our troops, probably. And this will help us give more army XP since we're doing it anyways for now, so. You get a thousand more manpower. Denounce the oath. Take the towns, army XP, infiltrate the castles. Eh, that seems okay. The communal union. All one in Christ. Burn the idols. Yet the directness did not overcome, which I like for more stability. And the thieves. Declare war on. Oh! Declare war on these guys. Well, that's not bad, actually. Well, the faster we take them out, the faster we can integrate them, so. Let's go and try to go down that path. 
Fraternal militia, Sudaplov's brigade, while already having proved its usefulness many times over, will not be enough to extend our authority and liberate our people from the darkness. As such, we need to begin organizing our believers into coherent armed forces, peasant armies, so to speak, under the banner of God and the liberation of our brothers. These fraternal militias will be the backbone of our liberation forces and will be trained to the best of our abilities both for asymmetrical and conventional forms of warfare to ensure that they are best equipped for the upcoming conflict after all. Many of the volunteers who have already come forward have never fired a rifle at another human before. It was for the freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keeping, keep standing firm and do not be a subject again to a yoke of slavery. Good, good, good. That's unfortunate that we take these guys out. The, probably the easiest group that we can take out. But we're going to scavenge for loot immediately because we want more loot. Please and thank you. And we're just going to move right on in if we can. 0.55 a day. God dang it. Hmm. Open refugee programs, huh? What do we have for natural spirits? We have our holy duty, more population, plus 15% division attack is nothing to scoff at. Plus 50% division recovery rate. God dang. I love God. Faith in the Holy Father. Ooh, West Siberian People's Republic. We get plus 20% more recovery rate, plus 20% more division attack, plus 20% war support. Wow. So we get a total of 35% more attack. Jesus Christ. And 70% more division recovery rate. Wow. Oh, that's a lot, but happy January 1965, my friends. We're going to be taking the towns. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's do this one first. Infiltrate the castles. Sudaplov and his loyalists are all quite familiar with the asymmetrical warfare which will be invaluable to our cause in the coming years. Indeed, our message of a popular Christian movement against the despots of the Far East will be highly popular among some of the most impoverished and poor peasants in their villages. Thus, we should arm Sudaplov's agents with their expertise Aaron experience and our message in order to infiltrate our enemies' front lines and disrupt their stability via the instigation of peasant revolts. This will not only cause destabilization, but surely the retaliation which typical of agents of darkness will only serve to win over more people to our beliefs. To the sound of musicians at the watering places, there they repeat the triumphs of the Lord, and the triumph of his peasantry in Israel. Then down to the gates march the people of the Lord. We get political power, more army XP, and command power, which we get more command power. Actually, who is... Oh, wait. Oh, my goodness. Level 3. This guy's level 4. Oh, yeah. I guess Pavel. I guess. I'm sorry, other guy. But he can be offensive as well. We can grab that too. Expert Delegator. I do want this one too. I think for now, it'd be better to get that one than Winter Expert though. Ben has been inaugurated as the dude. Well, congrats, I guess. Begin the raid. Please say... N Actually, I'm, I'm kind of open either way. Tribute paid. Miraculously, Kamchatka has caved in and paid us a tribute, handing over our desired loot from the state. Bloodshed has been avoided, and our men live to fight another day. It is unlikely that Kamchatka is, to, is to surrender to us again so easily. Beautiful, my friends. And right now, through schools, we've got equipments. We've got both equipment stuff. We need poverty or academic base. Academic base. New schools? Yes. That's the one we have to choose because, well, we need to. What do we have here? Better max factories in a state? Yes. That'd probably be good. Probably pretty good. Maybe. Let's see what happens. And now we're poised to do very well and bum rush them. Five. Yeah, we still can't build here, can we? Yeah, we can't. That uh, really sucks. That really sucks. What do we have here? We got plenty of guns. Hmm. I suppose for now I could make these guys thicker. Do we have any? We have no artillery, right? We have nothing but these guys. We don't have even at any anti-tank. It would help if, yeah, you get just a little bit more soft attack, which is, eh. It would help if we took out Kachanka? No, Kamchatka. So that we can get more factories, maybe. But after this, we shall be take the towns. Many of the towns that are ostensibly under our control and filled with our followers are still in reality clinging to the old tenets of anarchy and arbitrariness. Bandits, moneylenders, and sinners reign supreme in these cities, and despite our best efforts to remove these agents of darkness from power, we've been unable to. At this point, in order to secure our control over the towns and our territory, you must mobilize the peasants in order to drive the darkness out of the towns and restore the light within the people there, integrating them into a communal union. Many pointed out that this would indeed be a good initial exercise for the newly formed fraternal militia. We're still ironing out some form of the more of their more glaring issues. More army XP gain. Love it. Islamic Republic of Kostanai declared war on the Republic of Pavlodar. Cool. Let's get some industrial investments so we can get another factory. Thank you very much. And I will grab. Uh, oh boy. If we do both, we don't get any more stability, but we do get 0.3 more political power every day. 
Hold on. Now, before we do that, we let's let's use a calculator here and do some math. So, 75 days is really about 10 weeks. Slightly more than 10 weeks, but let's say it's 10 weeks. 10 weeks by 0.3 more political power is about 10 times 0.3. That's not that much more political power. Hmm. Is it really worth doing that? Eh, not really. I'm just going to choose one of them then. Let's get more stability then. Nice. So that's about 10 weeks. But hold on, is that daily? For 73 days. Daily. Oh, it is daily, of course. 0.3 times 75, really. Sorry, my mind's going kind of crazy. So that's really 22.5 political power if you did both. That costs 50. Eh, it's not really worth it, in my opinion. Wow. This is the first campaign I've ever seen the Siberian Black Army do this well. But yeah, doing both of these at the same time is kind of a waste. You spend 50 political power to get 22.5. Not really worth it. Oh, Omsk. <gasps> Collapsed authority. Oh, no. Yezov is dead. Oh, boy. Collapsed central authority. Holy crap, that looks really bad. Take the towns. Let's go and go to war and end the thieves quickly. When the Union collapsed, the Soviet Far Eastern fleet fled from Vladivostok, fearing the oncoming Japanese and ended up relocating to the Kamchatka Peninsula. While this patriotic move was widely regarded as popular since then, the Far Eastern fleet, realizing the harsh conditions of Kamchatka, have re restored to piracy and thievery to scratch out a living on the frozen peninsula. Their piracy is indiscriminate and they target both the poor and the rich, Russian and non-Russian. Clearly, these former patriots have lost sight of the true way and have embraced the darkness. It is time that we once again mobilize the fraternal militias and expel the pirates from Kamchatka by force if necessary in order to integrate them into our ever-growing mandate and save those under their control. Oh, I can't wait. Cannot wait. Glory be unto God. Usually when I fight these guys, the Divine Mandate of Siberia, they're not super easy to take out. So hopefully we have a good time just walloping our enemies. Ooh, and how many more days? I want to train these guys, but they're so close. If they even fight a little bit more, it's only minus 10% modified. Oh. Oh, boy. That is not good. End of the Union, huh? What does that one do? Arkutsk! Oh, crap. So basically, it's just going to be us versus Cheetah. Or the Siberian Black Army, who's looking pretty kind of kind of crazy. But they don't have that many more divisions. And they're out of manpower for now. But, you know. And Thieves, good. Good, good. All one in Christ. Father Men is known no more priest. He teaches radical ideas, some might even call ideals, that break with almost every other inter interpretation of the faith. That being said, it is precisely these radical ideas that have garnered such a following. One of his most radical and powerful teachings is that for God, there is no Gentile and there is no Jew. Every servant of God is equal before his eyes, no matter their nation nor creed. As the Father once proclaimed, there is no divide between brothers and sisters within our rank. Truly, the despotists and bandits have crushed the people under the boots and have allowed darkness to infiltrate the lives of every community that they control. These radical ideas vehemently rejected by the de these despots and atheists will help us attract a following even among the most oppressed of their populations. 12,000 manpower? Not bad. Hopefully it's a thousand for each of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So far? So good. Do they only have one division? They do. That's so sad. <sighs> if only they gave in earlier. Are we going to do okay here? Oh, the, uh, the motorized are doing... Doing pretty darn well. Oh, Nikolai Smirnov. Sounds like an alcoholic drink. Probably because it is. Yamashev. Well, they have no focus tree, so we're really sparing them. We're giving them mercy. Building new schools? Cool. Hopefully we can scavenge for loot again soon. And we've just built some new schools. Glorious. All one in Christ, though, my friends. All one in Christ. Burn the idols, though, as a father taught from Kalishans. Put to death... Therefore, whatever belongs to earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry, the vile nature of the state institutions that promoted, spread, and sublim subliminated, sublimated the people to mammon, the evil influence of wealth has corrupted them and caused rampant greed, a ruinous trend. We must take action to eliminate these institutions that have kept our otherwise faithful people obedient to money and wealth, for no Christian should worship money and power before God. Of course, these institutions will not go quietly into the night, so to speak. And to eliminate them completely, freeing our people from the burden of their influence will take some time. 15% more war support. Don't mind if we do. We do this in the name of Christ, of course. And man, this 
these infantry divisions, you know, these light infantry, a little slow, a little slow. But I figured they would be, they would have enough experience anyway, so. One, can we make two? Yes. Yes, please. Two would be nice. Can we win? Oh, maybe we can't win. What if we, yes. England joins Einheit's Pact. England picks a side at last. So be it. Force it. Force the attack. Now we are winning. Which, probably to the detriment of the motorized, which we cannot really refit, so, which kind of sucks. Help out, help out, help out. Open up the combat with it a little bit more. Come on, if I have to kill off this motorized, so be it. Suitable to have, uh, actually, I don't even know how strong they are. How strong are these, is this motorized? It's not that strong, it's only 10 combat with. And they have military police, that's kind of cool. The communal union. Once we finish putting, pulling down the pillars of old institutions, just as Jesus overthrew the merchants' tables in the temple, we must reforge a society around the true tenets of Christianity in the eyes of God and His Son, taking on lessons found both in the Bible and the teachings of the Father. We will establish a new system of interconnectedness and cooperation between our communities based on the tenets of communal property, fair distribution of labor, abolish, abolition of currency, and freedom from landlords and governmental authorities. It is imperative that we create this communal union, not just to ensure that our people will live as Christ has intended us to, but but also to forge a strong Christian mandate, first in Siberia, then throughout Russia. Only once the system is in place will we be confident in our ability to save the Russian peoples from the darkness. Good. Infantry anti-tank. Glorious. We have that stuff going on. How about improved infantry rifles? Or we could do land doctrines. Hmm, I'm not really sure which one I want to do. I'm thinking I might want to go down Combine Operation Doctrine. Because we can get air support eventually, and I do want to get air infantry finally. So, why not? Combine operations, I want helicopters, because this way we can reach closer to Christ in the air. At least that's hopefully the, the idea. I think it'd be kind of cool. Alright, so hopefully, I'm hoping that... You know what? It probably be it would be easier in terms of taking out victory points if we killed off or if Cheetah won right now, so we could kill them off. Taking out our coots can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but regardless of who wins down there, all that matters is that, is that we win here. Do we get another factory? Please, tell me we got we got at least one more. That is good, and maybe we get might get one more if we integrate this area. But we'll see what happens. They have one naval dockyard, so ships. The communal union, don't mind if we do. Yet the darkness did not overcome. The first statement God ever uttered was, Let there be light. The first thing that he created was light and its associated lightness. This lightness exists in all of humanity, the, no matter how dark the world around us may seem. It is taught by both the Bible and the Father that God loves his children and will redeem our world, no matter what will happen. No matter the hardships experienced, no matter the dangers that lie ahead, we are God's tools to ensure that regardless of the events in the coming months, God will ensure that the darkness will not now, nor ever, overcome the light. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk, walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Stability, command power for some reason, and by the light of the Lord. Event. Very cool. Any other upgrades yet? Probably not. Probably not. You have no more things you can fill in there. If that's the case, let's spend some command power. Perhaps. Ooh, we need to take out Magadan. Uh, upgrading some people here. Details. Yes. Let's go and pick up some more traits for these guys. Guerrilla fighter. Super... Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. No, details. Fortress Buster. Let's grab Scavenger just in case for this guy. And, ooh, promote, promote, promote. Well, I'm probably going to promote Pavel. Ooh, he has Recon. Just because he has skill 3 attack, which is not bad. Pablo Dark Lady War on the Poles. Okay, you know what? We're just going to promote everyone because we can. Might as well spend the command power now, right? It's not like we really need it, unless we can raid other people, which probably won't happen. Scavenge for loot. Nice. Yet the darkness did not overcome. We can't do anything about poverty, so we're going to go with more industrial equipment. So, that's always a good one to do. Nice. And, rouse the masses. With the pirates dealt with, we can finally focus on bringing down the despots, oppressors, and bandits down. These are the main, or the men in the grips of darkness, so deeply that they are unable to see the light. It will never understand our mission and goal. We can live by example, quote from the holy texts, and show the benefits of the communal union. But these men are far too gone to be confronted with the truth and accepted. Thus, 
It's clear that further action must be taken to ensure that the people under their autocratic rule are free from their chains and allowed to see the message. Father Men has already scheduled a public sermon that is to be broadcasted to all those to hear about the importance of tenacity and spiritual purity, rousing the masses and preparing all for the beginning of the struggle against the oppressors. Gets the event, the Lord's Word for all to hear. Ooh, Omo Peasants Kamchatka. Ooh, we maybe get more divisions. That would be a great thing. By the light of the Lord. The grace of the Almighty comes not through the poems of mankind, nor the rituals and incantations of the pagan. Rather, the Lord shines through the passions of mankind, through the goodness of the heart and the justice of the soul, as the miracles of the Lord blessed mankind through the waking days of life. On the great mount did the light of the Father, the vessel of the one true God, shine through. There so did the Father lead us all in prayer, singing the hymns to bless this land, hoping one day for a home of homes, inheriting the meek and lowly to find new life above all. There did the winter winds scar the walls, yet the fires of faith protect all who stand in prayer, blanketed neath the holy words of the Father, as he brought our souls closer to the heavens than any other in Russia could know. Here was where the, there were songs and prayers and cries, where the men and women of all these far-off lands came together under the watchful eyes of our Father. And here was where the light of the Lord was been brought, and the flame of missionary and life was birthed in the world. As the great and powerful Father watched on, it was his dear followers who brought forth the notion of spreading the faith across these frozen lands. It was by the Father's will, by God's will, as our great Father rests, we shall burn the way for the Lord in Russia. Blessed be the Russian snow. Wow, 20% more worse for it. Holy smoke, Arenos. That's quite a bit more. And hopefully we'll cover this very, very soon. Happy May 17th, 1965. It looks like Cheetah is not doing well. I kind of want to get involved in this right now, to be honest with you. Then again, democracy returns to Italy. Democracy shines in the Mediterranean once more. I was not expecting that. And Hadrish is dead. It's probably... Oh, I kind of hope Goring wins, actually. I've never fought Goring myself. Goring versus the Divine Mandate of Siberia sometime? That'd be kind of cool. It looks like... Oh, man, I need to play as this nation as well. They look like a lot of fun. Siberian Soviet. A progressive peasantry. Black Army Administration. Strong. Siberian Free Territory. Legacy of Siberian Plan, of course. Militarized society. Rouse the masses, my friends. Bring the sword. The spirit of the Lord is God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. If anything has become clear in the past few months between the formation of the communal union and the fraternal militias, the beginning of the peasant revolts, and our taking of the towns, it is that the people have heard the call of our Lord God and his ever faithful servant, Father Men. It is time to liberate our brothers and sisters in Christ from the tyranny of the Bolshevik pretenders and the reactionary fascistic counterparts. The struggle will not be an easy one, but it is a necessary one, for it is the call of our followers to bring light back to our broken nation and reintroduce hope and truth to a land gripped by darkness. Oh crap, we go to war with both of them! I was not expecting that. Okay. I might have asked for a little bit too much there then. Ooh. Hmm. Mm. If that's the case, we'll probably try to rush Cheetah first. Probably rush them, take Magadan, and then probably try to race down to Chumakan, and then focus on these guys down here. Because, hey, if they're killing each other right now, great. Yeah, they can't do a focus yet. 2,000 manpower. They have plenty of manpower. They have 7 to 10 divisions. We have 8, and these guys have 7 to 11. So we're... It's going to be a three-way war, which is fine with me. Please kill each other off as fast as possible. The, your lord demands it. Mm, political campaign. I don't want to lose stability. Focus on research. Infrastructure might be a lot of fun. Actually, how's infrastructure coming along? Om Omelon? Omelon? Probably Omelon. Ooh. Dockyards? Don't mind if we do. I love convoys. Can we... Actually, since we have this port here, we don't need Magadan. Oh, who's this? Empire of Japan. Oh, Atsu To. Uh, can we trade with America? I would love to trade with America. Bring the sword. Well, damn, move in. If we could quickly capture Magadan, that'd be great. Where are you guys going in? Go ahead and just come to Okhotsk. And then, if you could... Oh, if you could drive down here as fast as possible, that would be delightful. But good luck, everyone. We're going to need some help doing that. The Harbinger of Deceit. Slightly decreased scoring time. The Harbinger of Reaction. Oh, boy. The Pharaoh of Irkutsk. The Simon of Baratia. Well, they don't exist, so we can't do that one. Do away with the Lenin's Cult. Well, that's kind of okay. The Haman of Amur. They don't exist. The Serpent of Magadan. The Belshazzar of Chita. That's the harbinger of deceit. You live in the midst of treachery. By deceit, they shall deny knowing me. Jeremiah 9.6 It is written, 
Their words shall be obedient, but their hearts will be far away. So has it been for those that claim to rule the Far East, the yoke of those peoples that once followed God have grown heavy under the rule of the godless. Those who would spend fables of a golden future of freedom, even as the present, shook under their iron-tipped boots. But the people of the land will not be shaken by their lies. Already our brethren in the godless places, the Red Banner Land, spread the word, desperate, ceaseless in their efforts. They whisper broken promises, and the whips of those cracks echo behind the marching armies. They hint at the sorrow that bellies all trust in the world and its protectors, its marshals and premiers, and at a better one in the making. One where the Prince of Peace has made a true, lasting, just home for all Russians. And they say the time is coming when that home will be ripe for the taking. I hope we can win. And I hope these Akurtsk soldiers die. Just saying. And so they can meet the Lord. Sir, the peasants of Akutsk, we will galvanize the folks of the Presidium and the Supreme Soviet to rise up against our oppressors. The sinners of the Far East have abused God's people for too long. We must stir the common folk to rise up against the gods and help free themselves from their oppressors. Let's see what happens with this. Screw it, we're going to do both. Now where do we got more command power? We don't have any planes either, which kind of sucks. Please kill these guys off, please. Actually, yeah, they... Oh, they couldn't kill them off, that sucks. We might lose those soldiers if they rise up, actually, in Irkutsk. So, we'll see what happens. They're probably racing soldiers back up here to stop me, so... Go, go, go. Hey, we're coming in. They do have radar, which is, eh. Hello there. Why did we get down here? Oh, crap. Can we... Mm. Mm, can we capitulate these guys? Oh, you know what? You're gonna focus there. You're gonna focus on trying to link up over here. You guys. Well, these guys are probably gonna die. Let's be real. But if anything, let's try to capitulate Irkutsk. Maybe as we're trying to capitulate these guys over here too. So let's see what happens. If we can get the capital of Irkutsk, that would be kind of wild in my opinion. So oh, we're getting attacked immediately. That is not ideal. If we can get down here, we might get like point one supply. I don't know, something like that maybe. If that's the case, I want you to come down there and there so we can keep moving. Hey, we captured the port of Magadan. As the troops rushed past the Far Eastern frontiers, their assault on enemy lands was halted only by the sea. The Great Pacific opened and wide met our men after a bloody battle as the port of Magadan had come under our control. The icy and choppy waters stretched for miles in every direction in front of them. The mysterious stretch of the Siberian waters was a home to by far the most significant port in the eastern Russian wastes. A hub of trade and smuggling. With a particular taste for Japanese and American goods, the port of Magadan opens up greater opportunities for administration to not only trade wares, but also make a name for ourselves across the globe. Indeed. With this invaluable port under our control, we pray to see our foot in the door to international recognition and trade. The gateway to Russia has been secured. Which, honestly, doesn't really help us that much, but, you know, whatever. Nice. Get down here, and we'll probably capitulate these guys. These guys, these peasants. Oh, the Simon of Bratia. Thank you. Simon? Probably Simon. Cool. The Hobbinger of Deceit, which we just did. Ooh, Vindicate the Virtuous. I like that for more manpower. Let my people go. Ooh, poverty! Poverty goes, well, technically up and down, but whatever. Oh, man. Oh, I gotta do that one. The Pharaoh of Irkutsk. How can you say to Pharaoh, I am the one of the wise, a son of Eastern Kings, Isaiah 19.11. Nothing is new under the sun. There have always been the faithful, the servants, and there has always been those who would seek to, to lord over and destroy them, and so it goes on and on without end until the he King of Heaven returns. The latest to take up this mantle claims continuity, continuity from the blood-spattered union that came before it, and that, like that old tyranny, fell apart and in turn. Once its sins broke their fetters and overwhelmed the men who ruled over it, their kingdom without a king worships Yagoda, and behind them the red blood gun barrel, as the arbiter of truth. Power and power alone, their watchword. They broke the backs of the villages they conquered, without even the pretense of serving the people they claim to represent. Nothing is new under the sun. With every pharaoh that comes, a Moses rises from the bulrushes, and the Red Sea stirs once more. We shall declare unto the red blood waters that the Lord has come to save his people, and to strike down the chains that bind them with the oppressor close behind them. So, these guys are all together, right? You know what? We're going to put you under one group. At least give them a general. Vladimir Ga Glad Gladlin? Oh, boy. Just hold on, guys. We're getting down there. Hold, hold, hold. You guys are all moving, right? Good, good, good. Good, we got that little towel there. Uh, Cheetah is close capitulation. Irkutsk, not so much. Oh, but if you could take the capital, that would be so good. We might, we're going to definitely get cut off. They're not even moving in yet. Do we take it? No, yet. So we're going to take that, 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 and Toulon. Oh boy, oh boy, they found us. Oh boy. Oh, we can't go quite win there yet. Get down here. Help them out, help them out. Cut them off if you can, if you can. Oh boy, this is not good. This is not good. 
You might want to stop attacking then. You guys hold, and you guys hold. What you might want to do is actually go this way to take that tile, which, hmm, might not be good for us. Oh, if you could win here, please win, please win, please win. Oh, that'd be so good if we could. Oh, you know what? We're going to force the attack. That's probably really bad to do, but we're going to do it anyways. Let my people go. Sanctify the 50th year and declare freedom on earth to all your inhabitants. It will be a year of jubilee. Leviticus 25.10 It has always been the task of the Lord's chosen to deliver the good news to the enslaved, just as it was under the yoke of the Romans. The Spirit dwells closest to those whose hearts long for freedom, and it is in these hearts that accedes the truth of true faith are most fertile. And now that despots reign unfettered across the Rodina, the time has come to promise the lost exactly what they want to hear, freedom. Not in a hundred years or a dozen, but now. The priests have sent across the lands of the Far East to deliver pamphlets by the thousand, speaking household by household of a freedom unlike any other. Freedom from the yokes of red and black, freedom from the petty tsars and the worthless courts, freedom to live and love and worship. The shine, the lights shine in the darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome them. For they say, a final battle approaches, and this time the seas shall not close over armies alone, but sweep away the whole of broken Russia. Only the Lamb can save this, or save them from a latter day Passover. Only the Father can bring it to pass. Beautiful. And glorious. Okay, with that force attack, we should do relatively okay. It looks like we should have Irkutsk. That's awesome. You guys continue moving this way if you can. Continue taking that those towels as well. We are stuck here against Cheetah for now, which is totally fine. Totally, 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 totally fine. Uh, you know what? I want you guys to wrap this area up a little bit better than this. That'd be quite good. You guys come here and start taking as many tiles as you possibly can. And, oh, the Irkutsk Hydroelectric Station captured. With the city of Irkutsk recently taken by our Siberian armies, the mighty hydroelectric station has come under control. Constructed under the orders of Genrik Yagoda after the Soviet Union was pushed back to the corners of Siberia, this work of infrastructure has reliably generated energy for the entire city under its command. A mighty symbol of Russian mastery over nature, the Irkutsk Hydroelectric Power Station may also be a symbol of our control over the Siberian frontiers amidst the chaos of warlordism in the east. Given the immense amounts of electricity gathered from the currents of the river, we can utilize the potential of the hydroelectric station to send the power to our manufacturing plants, factories, and homes of citizens living within our territory. The concrete station towered over the Siberian waste and churned through great amounts of the Angara's water to generate electricity. We will use the natural veins of our fractured nation, and with such a magnificent source of electricity in the region of our energy supplies, we will never run dry. This will surely aid in our efforts. Cool. And good. Please take that out. Please win. Please win. Please clap. All right, come on, you gotta come down here and do that. Come on, we gotta win. No! Oh, we got we got this. This is good. And we lost the port. Oh boy, Artkutsk has taken the tiles, but I am gonna get this tile first. And push in. We've actually took the capital too. So, oh, they're so close to capitulation. They're so close. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just take a little bit more. Just take a little bit more. Take the ticket, 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 ticket. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, you're so close, too. You're so close. Come on. Oh, baby. That was that was great. They took out Cheetah, and then we took them out. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's very first episode with us playing as a divine mandate of Siberia. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we might end up in a war against the Siberian Black army. We're going to continue scavenging for loot as we integrate all these different places and foam the divine mandate of Siberia. Even though we did not finish our focus yet, that is fine. Thanks for watching though and have a great rest of your day.